in and I see your little pasta dinner. Perfect. Yeah, I got all organized here for you guys. Oh, thank you so much for joining so, us today. We appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I am home of the multiple zipper bag, but we're not going to talk about bags today because I love to spin cotton. And in front of you is a cotton bowl right here. And I have a pasta maker and I have everything backwards. So bear with me. So I'm putting it there. You see the lint coming out? I put the whole thing in. Actually, you should kind of break it up, but okay, let me break it up a little more here. There we go. So I gotta get the other way. So I love using this instead of buying gin cotton because um, you have so much less veggie matter. I mean, let me do another one for you. Gotta go the right way. And then here are the seeds. Okay. And I put in slowly amount, which you should do. Don't, you know. Okay. So normally I get like the cotton here. And you don't have to have any brush to fluff it up and all this. I mean, you don't even have to do this. Just stick it in here. And this is just a little pasta maker you got off. Pasta of maker. It right. does. I can gin so much cotton using this. Can you show us where the seeds pop out? Because that's fascinating. Oh. Uh, okay. tip, tip it up toward the camera so we can see the seeds. I there. know. I'm just not. Okay. I'm going to try here. And I, I know this from watching you before. That piece of leather it, helps it yes. go through. You need to use the piece of leather. So let me get this and hopefully, do you see the seats or no? Just lift just a little bit higher. Oh, there, there. they are. So see how yeah. the seats just pop so they out of the land. cotton? Uh-huh, they land up there. And so I just and then go. You can, oh, and oh. then you can, you can take your seeds and plant them and grow your own cotton. Yes, you can, which I have done, but I'm not really good at growing. My husband did it. I kill weeds, so. I mean, I, I can only grow weeds, but anyways. But if you look, the thing I'm trying to show with this, why I rather not buy ginned cotton, is when you do it this way, you have nothing um, with veggie matter. You're not gonna have shortcuts. I know you guys with sheep, when you shear, you got those shortcuts. Well, with ginning, they kind of do that with those gin machines. Where this is really, really nice. There's nothing in it and you can spin right from here. So that's why I think they're 30 bucks, worth every dime. And when I get going, I can really gin a lot. Plus if you do it the other way, if you do it, if you do it with your Let's see, is there a seed in there? Okay, get up here. So if you do it with your fingers, that's another way as well, but your fingers are gonna kill you after a while. So I think it's way worth getting that and getting a whole bowl of cotton and doing it that way. You will have so much success spinning it. And also to show you the fiber length, and again, you know, it's like wool. This stretch is pretty far. That's really far. So Pima is what I suggest to get. When you get to be more experienced and good at spinning, then you can get the brown and the green cotton. So, okay, so that makes sense. Now, I have, this is a spinning bowl and this is called a Tockley. You can spin cotton, you know, on a regular spindle if you want to. But the difference with this, if you watch, look how fast that goes. It goes super fast because cotton needs a lot of speed. 
So when I'm teaching people to spin, keep my hand this way, see my thumb and this? This is how I spin and it's going clockwise. If you want it counterclockwise, that's fine, but you better be consistent. So here I go. And I wanna show, that's the first step I show when I teach someone to spin cotton. They get used to that and they go, yeah, that's easy, okay. So my next step, and I believe with all spinning on any kind of drop spindle, um, any spinning device like this, even a spinning wheel, I agree with this. If you are a true beginner, the best thing to do, I'll show you now, you spin, it's called park and draft. Okay, I got spin in here. Then what I do is I tell the student, okay, put it on here. It's always hard to get it on. So let, let me do a little more spinning. Spin, park, okay, and draft. See how it's going? I'm just pulling it. So spin park and go until it gets kind of weak looking. So I'm gonna do it again, spin, oops. Need to get some of this on here, spin. And then, okay, all this spin and then I'm just pulling back. This is called the long draw method. This is the way you spin cotton. You don't do the worsted method. If I don't know how much spinners are out there. People who spin wool generally do the worsted and get a nice, you know, even type of wool. Um, if you do the method I'm showing you, the long draw wool, it's more fluffier and warm. But with cotton, it becomes straight and nice like that. See, I'm just pulling it. I want to get a good picture there. See, so I spin, park, even put that down, okay, just to concentrate, and then pull. If you do that in the very beginning and get really used to it, then you can move on to the next step. So here's how I put the cotton back on here. Let's go down there, all right. So then when you get used to that, you can just I go here, pull, but eventually you can spin and pull at the same time. Do not do that if you're a beginner. Park and draft. And when you're drafting, you're just pulling it. That's all you're doing is just kind of pulling it. I find this method a lot less taxing on your hands as well. Okay, then I wanted to show you, you can actually, if you don't have a set of cards, which I'm gonna show you how to do next. I gotta have enough there for you. Okay, let me get, see, this doesn't have enough spin. Okay, so I gotta go back down. Gotta have, okay, get more. It's practice, and when you know you have enough spin, you'll, you'll feel it. So here I have the cotton right here. Just kind of attaching it on is challenging, okay, for someone who's never spun. So here I am. And then I'm just pulling. Stop. But this is right from the bowl. Pick it from the tree and spin away. It's perfectly carded. That's what I love teaching this. So you, you don't have to have hand cards. But, and it, so it goes really good. I just want to get to the seed, if you don't mind. Uh, let me get more on here. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Pull. So Karen, we have a question. So what do you do with your spun cotton? Oh, it's a good question. I am a weaver. I own an eight shaft um, wolf and I've made curtains. I made a king size bedspread and I weave with it. Also, that's another good question. This top I have on right now, this is all hand spun and hand dyed by me. 
So I make clothing as well. I'm very sensitive. I cannot have wool at all of any kind. It just itches me. So cotton I love because it, it doesn't itch me whatsoever. So I, those are the two things. I'm to the point now, I'm not even buying, um, what do you call it, when, when you weave, I'm not buying any of the yarn. I'm just, I'm just using my cotton, I spin. I've got, I don't know, probably 30,000 yards and I wanna make another bed spread and that's what I'm working on. So, and I love to spin. Oh I spent two You're hours. amazing. I spent, well, I'm just good at that, but <laughs> I spent about two ounces a night, but I'm addicted. I have to spin or I get real itchy. I just get hyper. It just calms me down. There's something about it, but other spinners out there will agree with me. But um, so this spindle I have, this is a beautiful, I love this one. It's um, um, John Galen is his name and um, really love his spindles. They are the best and he makes some beautiful ones. So he's putting clocks at the bottom and just gorgeous. So it's, it's a beautiful piece to um, display. And, and, and it's so portable spinning cotton. I mean, if you learn on this, you can take this anywhere and spin it. So that's another reason I like um, cotton. And um, okay, now what was I gonna do? I did have to gin some more. Do you mind if I gin more? And I was gonna teach how to use the hand cards. That's so, perfect. Do you, I have to gin more though, sorry. Okay, let me make sure the right way. I'm gonna go in here, this will be easier. Everything's backwards, I don't do backwards. <laughs> okay, so I'll put more in here. I also like ginning it. I find this therapeutic. I'm just in a really bad position doing this. So I'm trying to so set it up my, for the camera. My so. friend Leanne showed me how to do that, and she grows a lot of cotton, and we did that. And it was really fun and I love watching the seeds pop out. I don't know why it's so magical to me, but they just pop out onto that leather. Yeah, it's really neat. I, I it bought is. this years ago just to make pasta with and I Well, and the kids love doing it anything. too. So I'm just going here. Can you see it okay? Because I'm you know, in an awkward position. Yep, we can see. Just want to get some out here. Okay, so we have this, and I have some of this here. Because I just want to show you how to use cards. They're called cotton cards. And um, again, you can use any kind of cards. My first set were Ashford fine wool cards, and they did great. But if you're going to really get into this like I do, cleanse and cleanse cotton cards with the curve, oh, I'm sorry, with the curve back. This, these, and these are specifically for cotton. You can also use them for um, cashmere and wool that's very, there we go. Okay. Cashmere and wool that's very fine. It, these work great with. But long wolves and that, you shouldn't really use these. It's better just to get the proper equipment. It's better to find what you really enjoy. Okay, let's find more of my fluff here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just charging the cards. And you know you're charging it correctly when it it kind of pulls and goes like that. So it's pulling. And you can't use comb. You know how you can have combs for wool. I was a wool spinner, and I over twisted my wool. And my spinning teacher wanted to give up on me. That's how bad I was with spinning wool. And then I found cotton, and I'm like. 
where have you been all my life? This is so much easier to spin. And I need so many spinners who are wool spinners like, oh, I can't spin, you know, cotton because they're doing that wor worsted method. They're not doing the long draw. So when I get a little wool spinner, what I do with her, in a matter of five minutes, she's spinning cotton. Because if you already spin, you already have a lot of the techniques that you would know. And I also have a Facebook page. Right now I'm going against, I'm kind of going against this. I'm gonna get a good position for you. So I'm going against it like this. And I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is just break up the fibers and make it even night easier to spin and get a smoother um, yarn. Well, anyways, I have a Facebook page. It's called, Hey, It's All About Cotton. I started it, I think, six years ago. We're up to 1,500 people. And it is the most wonderful group. I can't go on and on. Everyone's so friendly and helpful. We have Joan Ruay there. We got Sally Fox. We have really good advice from others who grow it. I've, I've gotten in touch with... Um, Farmers with the, the Arcadian cotton in and, and, um, Louisiana. See, I just switch the cards. What I do is I just, but the main thing is you're just pulling this. So my husband and I took a cross country trip and we, I, I met one of the, made friends with someone who's an Arcadian farmer and he grows brown cotton. And then there's another friend I made, but I haven't met him yet. And they live in Louisiana. And so I'm from California. I've never been to Louisiana. So we had a wonderful time with this couple. And I even got to pick his cotton in the fields. And it, it was like the, the only cotton field I ever saw was my own house. You know, having my own property. My husband grew it. But, you know, when I saw a real cotton field, I was like, I was just like in awe. I was jumping around like a little kid. And then I met Sally Fox and I was like shaking because she's so famous to me. And she was such a sweet, humble woman, highly intelligent. So anyways, this is what I have now. Now I'm gonna make the little um, roll ad, they call it. You guys can see it good, so hard. Okay. I'm taking this off. And if you look here, all I have is this one little piece of veggie matter. Throw it away. So now I'm going to go this way. This off. And here we go. I think it kind of fluffy. Everybody does punies their own way. But I'm kind of rolling it over here. And do a little of this. And that's Karen's Pony. There are some beautiful ones, though, I, I see on Facebook and Instagram that people make ponies with. I also have dyed cotton. It's very different than dyeing wool. And um, unfortunately, you have to rinse it a lot, which is sort of a pain in the butt. But you know, it um this top like I made that you're seeing right now. I mean, it was a darker green, and so I oversaturated it because I know eventually um, when you do all that rinsing and soda ash, and those are the things you need. Like I know with wool, you use vinegar to adhere the the dye. With cotton, you use, it's called soda ash, and that makes it stick on the cotton. So anyway, here's my puni, and I love spinning so much that I went, if you can see it, I own an e-spinner. It's a Hanson's. And the thing about the e-spinner is I have, um, this is called a lace flyer, and that's probably the best flyer to get with spinning, but you can still spin with their other type of bobbin type things. So I own the lace flyer, and I don't know if you've ever heard of a woolly winder. Way worth. Love my woolly winder. Um, 
I can run to the other room and show you a bobbin full of cotton. Sorry about that, but it's a bit more organized. Okay, so that this is um, a three ply that I did on my woolly winder. So um, I have four of these to do, and then I gotta. What you do is I take them off of that, then I get some Dawn and some a big pot and put super hot water, get it to a boil, put the cotton in it. I let it simmer for an hour and a half. And that takes all the wax off because cotton has wax. And if you plan to dye it, you don't like, you know, how um, wool has, um, what does it begin with, laminate? Something like that. Well, it has that on it and you have to take it off in order to dye it. So that's important. And then I, we live in Southern California. I just let it hang on my clothesline and dry. You can put it in the dryer and it comes out real fluffy. But anyways, this is my e-spinner and here's my little pony. Let's see what I have. Okay, I gotta come in there. So I'm gonna show you the long drawer. Well, I only do long drawer. I think I went on. Oh, I gotta plug it in. I have a battery. Really like the battery, then there's not so many wires. But if you don't, they give you a cord. But then if I go camping or anywhere, I can bring this anywhere. When I went across the country, I brought a pound of cotton in this. And we were in a tiny little camper. But I have to have my cotton. My husband knows that. So I'm spinning it. And now I'm going to attach. Oh, let me lower the speed a little. Pulling in. I hope you guys can see it. So I'm pulling this back. Now, the other thing important, when you're spinning this, you'll feel sometimes it, it gets overspun. So I get my fingers and go the opposite way to get it more consistent because you don't want kinky kink in it, you want a nice smooth looking cotton. So when I'm doing this, like pulling back. Karen, can you dip your right hand? There you go, perfect. Dip your oh, right you hand down and your left hand up. Yep, that was beautiful. Okay, look how I'm pulling this. Look how far. Then I spin, okay. And then I have my break there. So when you are spinning on a wheel, first I recommend get a little topply. And if you can't afford this cotton clouds, that's another place I support. Um, they have a whole set with the easy to spin cotton and they have the, the um, topply and you buy a little kit. And Irene is a very nice lady. So, um, so pretend you're brand new and you're at my wheel. So what I would end up doing is going, okay, Spin, 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 stop. And then I would be doing this. I'd be, can you see it better? Can you see it okay? I'd be pulling back. See how I'm pulling back? But then I use this finger. It's really important to get things even. Some people say, oh, you're cheating. You know, you should be just pulling back and it's smooth. No, I, you want to get the yarn you like, do whatever you want. That's my form on it. So spin, 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 spin. Okay, that feels like enough twist. Stop the wheel, stop your pedaling, and then just pull back. Can you say it okay, Mary? We can, and for the, I, I know it's hard to see. And now I'm see. twisting, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I know it's really hard um, for people to see the white against the white wall. Oh, but, no, I'm so sorry. But I, that's okay, no, you're doing great, yeah, Karen. I, I, it, yeah, it's like it's Here. like any kind of spinning though you're just letting the energy from the spin slide up into the fiber and you're controlling it and it, the fact that you're doing it with cotton it's not that different than wool it has a different feel 
but um, yeah. I it's think beautiful. it's easier to me. Wool is so stretchy. I try to do it and I'm like, give me my cotton. <laughs> well, you you cotton. certainly do, do the cotton wool. beautifully. <laughs> but I do teach wool. I do teach people how to spin wool in the long draw method. And um, but if I get a new spinner, I'd rather just show them cotton. And anyways, so here we go. I wish I had more black here. Okay, spin, spin, spin. Okay, stop it. Okay. This is all for using the other hand. Oh, you can't. Is that better? Yes, that's actually great. That's really okay. Great. Let me get down here. Next time I'll be organized. Mary, I will put a black background. Because I do agree, this was not a good idea. And I have so much trouble ah, with the lighting. Let's see what it is. I'm in an awkward angle here. Okay, so this is an Orpheus hook. Um, most spin wheels have this, except the pocket wheel. I used to own a pocket wheel, and that you didn't need the Orpheus hook. That's a nice little wheel too to get if you're wheel shopping. Do you have a video on the site that sells spinning wheels? Um, we, do, we do have a couple and I'd love to get some more, um, uh, both new and used uh, wheels on the site. That would be okay. sweet. That's good to know because uh, people ask, I want to buy a spinning wheel. And I always start them off with a drop spindle. Uh, that, so do I. Because if they're, you know, why invest that kind of money? Although they make it really cheap wheel, they have one called an eel. And it's like only a hundred dollars and it's an electric. And um, yeah, the electric wheels have really, um, there are lots of them out there now. I mm. happen to know Beth Hansen and her husband very well. And I have a Hansen. Oh, you do know them. I they, do. They I, are wonderful. I'm telling you, oh, the thing is going, why did you that? Um, yes, I really like them. They have the best customer service. And you know they want to make you really happy. That's their their goal here. So yeah. um, it, those Hansons are beautiful. They're they're well made. They're long lasting. Extremely. But there are really. lots of them out there. So Karen, it, that is just fabulous. Thank you so much for being our guest uh, cotton spinner oh. today. I and didn't I know just, if anybody had questions about cotton or um, you know, I, I can answer more. Either. Yeah, I don't have any other questions here. I do want you to just, if you have one handy, lift up one of your bags because I want to remind everybody about oh, yeah. fabulous uh, bags. Right. Now, Karen it makes these amazing craft bags that we all love. Um, I, this one I just finished and it's called, um, what is the name of it? Tangerine. They come in all different beautiful colors and prints and crazy things, and they have all and I do custom. Elements. They're fabulous. Um, the, the thing with these bags now is I offer free shipping, and it's 30 a bag, and the shipping is insured. Because you know USPS, they can be a headache. So... So if you um, look on the website, you will find a bunch of them with all sorts of different designed cloth. They they really, they're very sturdy and I just love mine. Um, I have a couple of them now and I use them for all sorts of things. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I'm, I'm getting more fun and creative. The zippers, now I'm adding one zipper that color, it's all in one and one zipper another color. And so that, that's fun. I enjoy that and max, you know, matching everything. And then all my bags have a charm. I really try to put something related what the bag is. Like I had one with uh, a Paris bag and had the Eiffel Tower charm. Thought that was really cute. But so you get like all different colors inside. It's got nice little pouches, plenty of room. I mean, here's my cell phone. Let me get this. Ah, there fits in and I like using mine. I put stitch markers, scissors. Um, I have a talk lead bag too with cotton. I put the bees in it and my different spindles that I have. And so, and another thing cotton does come 
and Cotton Cloud sells this, and I typically do it this way. And it has, they have a be beautiful, it's called easy to spin. If you don't mind if I educate you more on this. Oh, no, that's gonna, perfect. If you're gonna buy something, okay. Some people may be offended by it, but I have to still say it. If you're a beginning cotton spinner, make sure it is carded and not um, a sliver because the sliver thing is really slicky. And if you're a beginner, you're gonna get really frustrated. When, when you get better at spinning, then it's okay. Then you can buy that stuff because there's a lot of indie dyers that sell um, colored cotton yarn that they dye. And oh, they're beautiful. But I always read it I wanna, because I wanna enjoy my spinning. I don't wanna fight with it. So make sure that it's carded and not just, I guess they call it combed. Now I know a wool, if it's combed, it's wonderful to spin. So that that's a good plan, but I with cotton, you want the carded, you want the fibers going different ways. Because if you were watching me with the cotton bowl here, these fibers are going all different ways. And that makes it easy to spin. And so, you know, that's my recommendation. Um, on it. I know we do have someone who sells, is her name Common, Common Thread? Or is, who's the girl that sells cotton on the farmer market? Isn't there so that's, a con, that's Conserving Threads. I Conservative, yeah. I, yeah, I put her up. With, so we have Acadian Brown Cotton, which is a cotton project um, down in Louisiana mm -hmm. um, that is Fabulous. If you have a chance, I put it up on, on the Facebook page. Go take a look at their web page. They are trying to revive the original Acadian brown cotton. And they've gotten lots of grants and museum shows with what they're doing. And then Melanie from Conserving Threads, who also has a store, and I posted that one. She has cotton, hemp, nettles, rose, soy, she has all kinds of fibers. Uh, now, last week she taught a class on how to upcycle yarn from sweaters, mm -hmm. from thrift stores. And she has a hemp um, spinning class that she's posted that's coming up and has fairly limited. So if you wanna learn how to spin hemp fiber from Melanie, go sign up for that. So we have lots of resources for, for cotton and hemp. Yeah. And and for anybody, my... who can't, anybody who can't wear wool, it's a perfect alternative. On my Hey, It's All About Cotton, I actually put up all the vendors. When I welcome people, I welcome everyone who comes because we are a friendly group. I'm telling you, we have Ronnie there. He's saying, hello, welcome. It is such a wonderful group. And on the vendors list, I put, you know, when I welcome people, I have all those vendors listed that I feel do a good job. And I'm sure conservative threads I have on that list too. She's part of my group and I let people advertise on there. As long as it's cotton related, I don't care. I'm not one of those a stickler, you know, let's put that up, you're selling stuff. I want, people need resources of how to get cotton. And so my page really offers a lot. And it's, if you have any interest in spending cotton, Highly recommend you come to my group. There's another group called Cotton Spinning on Facebook. And we both started at the same time. It was really funny. And so um, I have a lot of my files, educational stuff and everything. I posted this, all the fiber, any of the shows you guys do, it always goes on my website. 